from a set of core issues, uh, both from an Indian context as well as a global context. Uh, I think the one of the major issue I would uh, like to call out is the set of digital skills which are needed for this kind of uh, uh, implementation and absorption of these technologies uh, within a factory uh, context. Uh, from an Indian context, uh, I think it's far more nuanced and uh, far more uh, deep. Uh, one of the major issues obviously is some, a lot of our factories are fairly old uh, and with their old uh, legacy OT systems uh, that will require a heavy amount of financial investment uh, both from a capex uh, and also from an opex perspective uh, in, 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 which is needed. Uh, then from uh, the kind of workforce uh, and their background, their set of uh, age bracket in which they are, it's difficult for them to uh, comprehend and get familiar uh, with these uh, technologies very easily. So that brings in the whole aspect of uh, change management. Uh, the third, one of the most important ones is even the top management, at least the factory heads and the department heads and the people who are running uh, those various plants, uh, how familiar are these with technologies? That's something which the Indian firms are trying to ensure that they are uh, made aware uh, through various programs and exposures uh, to try and mitigate these uh, challenges and issues. The factors which any organization, whether it be Indian or global, should consider while undertaking uh, an absorption or implementation of a digital technology within their organization. Uh, for one of the first and the foremost which I would call out is the business sponsorship. This is a new technology. This will require a fair significant amount of financial investment. So the top management support is one of the most crucial. Uh, secondly, uh, it's the ITOT connectivity. Our uh, Indian context, the, most of the factories and the OT systems are fairly old and their compatibility with the IoT sensors is something which is slightly uh, suspect. Uh, third uh, is the availability of uh, data. While we have a lot of historians in most of the factories, but this will require multi-year data, clean data, uh, and uh, multi-variable data. Uh, to ensure that the time series and the casual analysis can easily be done. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, design considerations, it's very important that uh, the factors uh, which needs to be considered, the parameters are well thought out both from a visualization and simulation perspective uh, to ensure uh, these. And last but not the least is the cyber security. The moment you're going to uh, absorb uh, and get this connectivity in and suppose you're going ahead with a 5G uh, rollout as well uh, within your factories, uh, the cyber security uh, for protecting this data because the surface area uh, certainly increases uh, with the ITOT connectivity and other areas. It's quite important to consider. So these are the five factors I would suggest any organization, whether it be Indian or global, to consider before undertaking this journey. Almost all the sectors are experimenting with uh, digital twin technologies and uh, which type of digital twin deployment is happening is being determined uh, by the industry there. For example, let me consumer durables which is on air conditioning, one of the global majors uh, for their factory and their manufacturing operations is trying to uh, create a digital twin for their manufacturing operations. Uh, large uh, logistics uh, firms are looking at from a network twin perspective uh, to ensure that their operations are fairly well. Uh, we all know about how Metaverse uh, which is the underlying technology in Digital Twin was used to simulate the operations for the new Hong Kong airport terminal uh, to ensure that the passenger movement and other aspects of interactions uh, and retail and the utilities were looked at. Um, we've also recently seen how Metaverse uh, was uh, used uh, and uh, from uh, automobile industry in the recent uh, announcements made by another European uh, auto manufacturer. Uh, so much so that uh, 
uh, McKinsey estimates that digital twins will reduce the time to deploy new AI-driven capabilities by close to 60%. CapEx and OPEX expenditure by reduce them by 15% uh, and the commercial efficiency can be improved by 10%. Uh, in fact, markets and markets research estimates the digital twin market to grow from uh, 3.8 billion, which they estimated in 2019. Uh, by 2025, it will be 35.8 billion dollars. The industrial segment across the globe is very eagerly awaiting the rollout of 5G enterprise uh, solutions. And the reasons are not far to see and so much so that uh, IHS market has gone ahead and put out an estimate that uh, 5G would uh, enable uh, close to 13 trillion dollars in economic value across the in various industries by 2035. It's not that our high-tech industry or the auto industry, to name a few, were not using uh, these uh, robots in the past, but they were a little constrained with the kind of network and the bandwidth which they had and the solutions which could be enabled uh, through a 3G or a 4G. Uh, but with the 5G and its ultra-high, uh, you can say, uh, low latencies and high bandwidth, uh, they will enable a lot more new technologies uh, like computer vision, AR, VR, uh, and uh, you can say the processing on real-time basis, the various IoT sensor data, which will enable a lot more uh, productivity, uh, higher productivity and faster decision making and try and uh, assess the, the operations and improve uh, them to a large extent. But at the same time, the machine-to-machine -machine communication is uh, some, some distant away and I would see more of mobility related uh, solutions coming in the very near future. Industry 5.0, while being reasonably futuristic, has two distinct visions. The first one is definitely focused on the human robo co-working space. Before I elaborate that, I would like to give an example. We would have mostly seen those Boston Dynamic videos uh, which circulate uh, on the Facebook and WhatsApp uh, about robots then operating. So, actually, that's a very good example, if you see. It's all about leveraging these exponential technologies of edge compute, uh, IoT, 5G, and uh, big data to really ensure that humans are focused on the creative aspects of the job while robots are doing those dangerous, difficult, manual, and repetitive tasks. The second aspect of Industry 5.0 is bioeconomy. It's about how we can run our industrial operations in the most optimal manner using renewable resources and can stay in harmony uh, with the ecology and uh, the surrounding uh, and without disturbing uh, the climate uh, uh, aspects onto it. So if in, in a summary, I would just say it's all about how best we can operate in an industrial environment by leveraging these exponential technologies to ensure that robots do the difficult task and we are in rhythm with our ecology.